<laughs> well, it's well, just like solving a problem. But, but yeah. both you guys are right, though. It is actually watching that movie. It's two and a half hours long. The 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 articulation of the plot. There's uh, there's it's nonlinear. I guess is the best way to yep. describe it. And it never ever doesn't make sense. It's like Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. It's like a lot of stuff that Tarantino does, and it effortlessly makes sense. And that I have a lot of appreciation for. And it's a great looking film. And I thought the score actually was a sense of dread throughout it, which well, the was score works very well. Yeah, which was undeserving because the stakes in the end really aren't that dreadful. Yeah. Um, I can actually I tell you something about is. that score. Interesting, because I interviewed Hans Zimmer, who did it for the first time in his career, and he has a. He must have done a hundred scores. Oh yeah. The director actually had him write the score before he saw the film. Wow. He said, "This is here's the script. Here's what I want to do. Write a score to it, and I'll match it up to it." And that was unheard of. And Zimmer said that was one of the biggest challenges I've ever had, and it worked. It's also about how you're you're not aware of other people's perspectives. Like mm -hmm. when he comes into the bar. And he says, uh, so he said, makes some reference to the coat that he's wearing, not knowing that he's wearing the coat of the woman's um, dead boyfriend, I think, or something yeah. like that. So she loathes this guy and thinks that he's messing with her mind. And she, I think, does something to his drink or that. And, and Spits in his drink. Yeah. yeah. And, and I found that interesting about Memento, too, though, that it wasn't just what he was going through, but also the fact that... Um, it's about, I think, communication, too, where you, you think you under, you know, oh, this person hates me or, oh, this person likes me, and you, you have no idea you know. what they're really thinking, and they could be in a, on a different planet, almost. And there's also the carrying uh, area, you know, I'm sure it's in the Cape, but also in the Boston area, you mm -hmm. get uh, uh, 200,000 college students every, every year. It's, uh, it's a film savvy area. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody wants, and fortunately, a lot of people do want to see them in the few theaters yeah. that well, we can still see them. That's great. And I think and the really internet, even seen. though the internet is uh, uh, the rival now to, to print media and criticism in general, it also draws a lot of people into, into a discussion of movies and, and cinema and, you know, and their favorites. And, you know, some people are, are more. Uh, literate and, uh, and intelligent in their discussions than others, but I think it's you know it's it's all it's a big, big draw. It it, it makes I think it all is is good to make uh, you know cinema more, you know it will live for another century. I think or changing. I mean these are basic elements in, in, in a good novel too. And y you know so if you just want to put 3D out there and have things pop off the screen, why not just go on a trash humpers 3D? <laughs> <laughs> that should be the title of this discussion, huh? with, with the soup kitchen experience get thrown in. On the phone. <laughs> let's get into that a little bit. I think this is the final nail in the coffin right yeah. here. Yeah. Let's, let's get into that a little bit. The, the death of film criticism um, in our society today. People reading less film criticism. Is that true? I mean, at the same time, we have a, a book by Jerry Roberts celebrating film criticism that just came out this year, and also a film by Gerald Perry that celebrating the medium. Well, Jerry's film celebrates it, but it also talks about the sort of, I mean, really what you're talking about, though, is the underlying thing is the death of print journalism. Right. I mean, or, or sort of the changing thing, and print journalism hasn't figured out what the next step is, right. so they're kind of tied. On the other hand, you know, we're also getting more into this fanboy and blogging thing, so I'll just, I was just redefining the question without yeah. answering it. But I think you're, you're right, though, and Jerry's film addresses that. I mean, it's not all hand wringing. It's like, well, okay, there are all these. You know, the, we're hearing a lot more voices. We're just not hearing them, and well, we're not reading them. We're, we're but well, we are reading them, but they're online. God, that was. Well, you, got, you, know, you got it out. You got it out. <laughs> well, it was finally, funny. you know, if you ask somebody, what does it take to be a critic? Like for anything, I think you know, like you need to have a, a passion for for the. Uh, for what it is you're, you're criticizing. B, you have to understand the history of it. And then C, you have to be good at, at, at being a voice about it, what, you know, whatever that voice is, whether it's you know, print, et cetera, et cetera, you know, radio, TV. Um, you know, but with the internet now, anybody can just walk up. And there are a lot of people that have very popular websites that don't know anything beyond 1999. Right. Um, you know, does that make them a good film critic that might be you know, good for them to tell you if Inception's a better movie to see than Twilight? You know? Right. Yeah, no, well, and it's, I think that's the same problem with all print journalism, though, where um, hopefully audiences eventually will be able to recognize um, Voices that are, that um, that are providing context that that they know what they're talking that are credible, and and that's that's the scary thing I think right now about the internet with 
with anything, with with any kind of journalism, where if people just oh it's it's in print, so I it must be, you know I'm seeing this on, online, so it must be true, mm. you know, and uh, there's uh, an unsophisticated reader might not know. I hopefully I think eventually let's say we're we all end up writing um, strictly on the internet. Hopefully audiences eventually will gravitate. Well, okay. You know, I'm not going to read just anybody. I'm going to go to Peter Keo because I know that he has credibility. He's a cranky old man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. They made I movies about the Grumpy Old Men series. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I that's the scary thing right now. I think with journalism in general, you well, don't know who's putting also out the information. There's intellectualism. I think uh, that the internet is at least in this first phase is drawing yeah. that people are saying, you know, it's only a movie or. You know why? Why are you why are you thinking about it? Why are you uh, putting it in a context, and which is all the, what criticism has been about since Aristotle? You know, is 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 analyzing things, putting it in the context of other works of art in the same genre and other works of art in general, and people just look at that and they say, uh, it's you know, why, why do you bother doing that? Just go to the movie and watch it. Yeah, and, uh, and it's well, good or it sucks are, or is it? Well, but there are 400 movies a year, I think, that are coming out these days. I think people appreciate having a little bit of a guide. From somebody they have followed and maybe no, trusted. Yeah. So yeah. I think but the thing is that the, the, the guide is based not on you know this sucks or you know this is good. Sometimes people make up their minds about that before they even see the movie. Have you sure. seen like Rotten Tomatoes? Now somebody writes a negative review about a movie that everybody's anticipating. It gets 150 comments from people who say that you're stupid, you're wrong. That film hasn't been shown to these people, <laughs> so they're responding just be what they anticipate. Uh, but that's why we need critics. I, yeah, that's we try telling them that. Mm -hmm. But the, the 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 basis of criticism of you know one one function of it is to get is to tell people what you think is good or bad, and they can judge from what they know about your own taste right, to, right. to to take you seriously or not. Um, and the other is to get people engaged in a discussion and appreciation of movies that goes beyond just the you know the superficial that engages your intellect, your spirit, you know. Um, and the beauty of the movies, uh, as well as just the, uh, the like the visceral kind of impact that you get from from something. You sound like a guy who likes movies. Oh, is that what we were talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought we were talking about. It was just a dream. I thought it was baseball. <laughs>